Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to a new week of AutoLine Daily. Have we got a lot of news to get to today. Later on in the show, we've got a story on what could be a major breakthrough on the rotary engine discovered by a backyard mechanic. But before we get to the news, have you seen the results of the AutoLine poll? We asked you which presidential candidate would be the best for the automotive industry, and the results are an exact mirror of the national race. Based on your voting, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney are tied, both with 46%. Gary Johnson of the Libertarian Party got 6%, while Jill Stein of the Green Party and Virgil Good of the Tea Party both got 1%. I think the Outer Line poll is a great indicator of how this election is going to go. Okay, now let's go to Brazil because there's lots going on in the booming Brazilian market. Chevy just took the wraps off a new subcompact called the Onyx, which debuts at the Sao Paulo Auto Show this week. It's powered by a 1.4 liter engine with a six speed automatic. GM Brazil is introducing seven new models to offset a drop in sales. The AP reports BMW will invest $500 million to build a new plant in the country. And Bloomberg reports that Volkswagen will spend $4.4 billion to upgrade its factories and models in Brazil. You're all familiar with Google's autonomous vehicle. And now China plans to start testing them too, but its own, not Google's. They're going to run from Beijing to neighboring city Tianjin, a distance of 120 kilometers. The National Natural Science Foundation of China, which is conducting the test, is planning a longer test drive in 2015 that will cover 2,400 kilometers. The foundation says it has made several technological breakthroughs, but it's still way behind Google and others. Speaking of innovation, the Nissan Delta Wing race car ran in the 10-hour, 1,000-mile endurance race at Road Atlanta and finished a very credible fifth place. This despite the fact that it had to start dead last and was not allowed any wave arounds under yellow flags. Otherwise, it would have finished higher up in the rankings. We love following the Delta Wing because it represents such a breakthrough in racing design. It has half the horsepower of the cars it runs against. Hey, good news on the sales front. Words Auto forecasts that the seasonally adjusted annual sales rate, or SAR, will top 15 million units for the first time since February of 2008. If the industry can consistently hold that rate in the months to come, then I think we can officially declare that the auto industry in the U.S. has fully recovered. Lexus is unveiling the latest version of its LFLC concept car. Now it's painted blue and it's being shown at the Australian Auto Show, but here's what caught our eye. Toyota says the hybrid uses, and I quote, an advanced high-energy battery pack. Now, if this was just a lithium-ion battery, you'd expect them to come out and say so. Could this car be fitted with the Zinc Air battery that Toyota's been working on? If so, it could be a breakthrough. Toyota isn't saying what's under the hood, but we sure need to learn more about this car. On Friday, Local Motors announced the winner in the first place of the Ultimate Delivery Vehicle Challenge, sponsored by Domino's Pizza. Over the course of a six-week competition, more than 1,500 concept files were submitted. Of those, 120 concepts met all the competition criteria, with Anish Kostrovich, hope I'm saying that right, of Slovenia submitting the winning design. The challenge still has three more phases of interior, surfacing, and rendering that will conclude in February 2013. The Wankel engine has always held out a lot of promise, but never was able to fully deliver on those promises. It was never very fuel efficient and the exhaust temperatures were very high. But now an independent car tech thinks he stumbled onto what held up that engine. Coming up next, what could be a breakthrough for the rotary engine? 
Clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Why? Higher take rates, lower cost of ownership, longer range and better fuel mileage, lower CO2 emissions. Clean diesel, good, economical, functional. Bosch, invented for life. Some of the best automotive innovations come from shade tree mechanics and backyard tinkerers. One such inventor has focused his attention on improving the rotary engine. Ernie Brink has come up with several upgrades for these unique power plants. The inherent problems all uh, since they've been around is very, very, very hot exhaust and terrible, terrible, terrible gas mileage. It's just an amazing motor that Felix Wankel designed and uh, it, it just never took off and I believe that it's going to take off once again for all the companies that was involved with it back in the day. Ernie's been fascinated by these high revving engines for decades. As a former Mazda technician, he'd better be. Even though they're nearly extinct today, he's very optimistic about the Rotary's future. In fact, he's come up with two possible breakthroughs to their design, the first of which addresses their inherent loss of compression. As soon as the intake crushes, it lines up with a spark plug hole right in this area. And that whole movement of intake is wasted into this other chamber that is, that is exhausting. So what we have here is it floods the plug because it didn't fire then, and it uh, raw gas and air goes into a smoldering exhaust. This is why the exhaust was so hot on them. Uh, so as soon as you put a slot in the plug hole instead of a hole, a 14 millimeter hole, you make that a millimeter and a half slot, you have no leakage. So now you get this full volume of intake compressed just like you would do on your piston engine. The way to explain it is kind of like if it's a cylinder wall and a piston ring uh, and there's like a hole or a gouge in the cylinder wall, as the ring comes up, compression goes past the gouge in the cylinder. So when an apex lines up with a plug hole, it actually leaks internally. By ditching those big fat spark plug holes and replacing them with narrow slots, no wider than 1.5 millimeters, he says, compression is no longer wasted out the exhaust. But there's more on the table with the Wankel engine. Um, as the intake and you compress to top dead center, okay, this is top dead center. The plugs are here, okay. What you have to do is split this in half. So half of this is trying to push it back and the other half is trying to spin it. So my fix and my solution is a uh, offset compression. Okay, what this does is when it's at top dead, the volume is offset. It's kind of like a wrist pin in a piston the wrist pin is offset in a, pin, uh, in a piston, slightly. Uh, and this really helps that motor. The idea behind that offset combustion chamber is to help kick the rotor in the right direction so it's not pushing against itself. Ernie has actually built a specially modified engine to put his theories to the test. The results of this experimentation were astounding. He claims the EGT, the exhaust gas temperature, fell by 600 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't really know if Ernie has truly come up with a breakthrough, but what he's saying certainly seems to be logical. I hope someone with the will and the resources can fully test out his theories. Are you listening, Mazda? Anyway, that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.